Oh, just a minute now, just a minute. There we are. Oh, for one dreadful moment then I thought I'd, I, I was going to forget to put the new Barry Manilow um, uh, uh, calendar picture on. God, that would be a real disaster, boys and girls. I'm telling you that now. If I forgot to turn that picture over, e the emails that would flood into this studio, dear, here in Royal Berkshire, they would flood in. A new month, a new picture of the great Barry Manilow, who we kneel down to and pray to every night that it will bring us more music and happiness into our sad, lonely, pathetic lives. It really will. Good morning. Oh, dear. Saturday the 4th of October 2014. A very warm welcome to you. This is Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom talk. And today I have come. I had a, a, a sudden costume change. While that little countdown, those of you watching the live show, uh, who get the countdown at the beginning, while that was happening this morning, I suddenly thought, I'm not happy with the top I'm wearing. And I had a very, very quick costume change, boys and girls. A costume change into my little red riding hood outfit. Do you like that? Little red riding hood. That is me. Where is my basket of goodies? Where is the goodies? Where is the wolf with the big ears that can hear you well? The big eyes that can see you well. The big teeth that will eat you all up. Or oh, I hope my great nieces or nephews aren't watching this. They might be scared. I don't like to scare children like that, actually. Thank you very much. No, I don't. Let's see who we've got to say good morning to so far this morning. Good morning to Rory. Good morning, Rory. In Fulham. Are you still in Fulham, Rory? Is this the first time you're joining us live? I think it might be. Oh, by the way... Notice the throat's gone again. Uh, no pain. It was all right yesterday. And then um, I had a little sleep in the afternoon. And when I woke up, it was gone. The voice was gone again. So I'm having trouble extruding my vocalness to you today. <coughs> Maybe if I sung a couple of notes, it might help, Rory. Just a moment. La, 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 la. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 is that any better? Has that cleared it? I sort of had a Middle Eastern tone to it then. Did you notice that? Shall I do it again? Oh, 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 Greg Gregorian chant. Great O in Unum Deum, Patre Omnipotentem, Bactorem Celiatera. Has that worked? No. It's still just as bad as it was. What a shame. So you'll have to put up with my rasping voice today. It may go, and I may have to leave you early because of it. What a shame. Rory says, good morning, Chris. Looking forward to those Manilo duets, particularly with Marilyn Monroe and Louis Armstrong. Rory, are you a massive Manilo fan as well? We are pleased to hear this. Rory Dyer, Manilo fan, representing Fulham and the southwest of London. This is excellent news. Uh, Rory says, if Marilyn was alive today, she would be 88 years old. Which, to be honest, is only mildly more, uh, mildly older than the people I was DJing to last night. I'll tell you about that later in the show. Uh, yes, indeed, Rory is in Fulham. Uh, he thought I was very tuneful then. I thought I was quite tuneful as well. But <coughs> uh, yes, a little bit of trouble getting the noise out today. The voice, the voice is not operating at its normal perimeters. He says, "Have, have a glass of water. I've had two cups of tea, and it's not sorted. It, I'm afraid. We do like a cup of tea." Good morning to the lovely Wendy. Oh, Wendy, you're so quiet now. I hardly ever hear from you, lovey. Wendy says, good afternoon, Chris. I'm loving the red top, looking mighty fine. Mighty fine, because I have the big ears to hear you with, the big eyes to see you with, and the mouth to talk for hours on end, even even with this power, poor little voice I've got, but I'm carrying on like mummy's brave little soldier. I really am. Mummy's brave little soldier. She says, you're sounding a bit hoarse. How's the throat? Doesn't hurt. Just the noise won't come out. You know, it's, the noise won't come out. Um, yes, Rory, Wendy says, 
you must next get to a Barry Manilow concert next time he's here. Don't know when he's going to be here. Um, he usually does every two years, doesn't he? Although he has been two years on the trot, so I don't know. We haven't got any information at the moment about Barry concerts because he's been working on that um, CD, Dream Duets. Well, have you ordered it yet, um, Rory? Amazon. One click ordering, dear. You can order it, but it won't come until November, I'm afraid. Wendy will uh, uh, pipe up in a moment with the exact date for you as well. Thank you, Rory. Thank you, lovely Wendy. Um, good morning to Daniel, who says, Hi, Chris. If you're going to keep trying to sing, I'm turning off. I beg your pardon? Turning off? How rude are you? You're scaring the children. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What do you want me to send? Sweeties in the post. What about those Haribo things? Do they? Do your children like Haribo? I don't know why. This I've got something against Haribo sweets. They don't... <sighs> How can I put this? They don't seem like real sweets to me. And plus they've got gelatine in, so there's bits of dead animals in them. Did you know that? Haribo sweets have gelatine in them, which is dead animals. Oh, strange thing to have in sweets, really. It really is. Uh, good morning to Marge, who says, good morning. And you have baggy jeans on bottom. No, I have, um, I have, uh, I have grey shorts on today, Marge. Would you like to look? I have my grey, grey, grey shorts on today. Let me stand on the chair and, and show you. There we are. Grey shorts today. Grey shorts today. OK. There we are. Let me just open my window. One second. That's better. It's actually a little bit chilly today. That's why we've got the long sleeve shirt on. But uh, in the office, in this little office here, once it uh, warms up because of all the computers, it can get a little bit hot. We don't like to turn on. It's very, very dark and dismal outside. It's raining. For the first time in weeks and weeks, it is actually raining outside, which is uh, quite good for the garden. I shan't have to turn on the hose today. Certainly shan't have to get my, my water meter going around either. Thank you very much. Um, so rainy and dismal today, although I'm not complaining. I think we've had the longest summer that we've had for years. It really has been a good summer. It's gone on and on and on. And only today... Only this morning is the first time I'm thinking, oh, feels a little bit chilly out there. You know, it does does actually feel a little bit chilly out there. Rory wants me to sing some more. Oh, I can't do that. But next week, Rory, um, I shall be uh, performing Candyman. Do you know that song? Especially for Wendy, because she's wanted me to sing that. And I'm hoping that I might sing it at tomorrow's karaoke. And um, then uh, someone will record it for me with me a um, uh, little, little uh, uh, iPhone 5 camera. And then uh, that'll be one of the short videos next week, Rory. So Candyman for you. Not, not on the live show. We can't be singing on the live show. <coughs> Especially with, not with a voice like this. But thank you for your enthusiasm. When are you coming to our Sunday karaoke, Rory? It's 7pm. Have you got a pen? 7pm to 11pm. At the Cherry Tree, Grove Vale, East Dulwich. So actually, that wouldn't be too far from you, I wouldn't have thought. East Dulwich, about the, I would say about the same distance as uh, Belushi's in London Bridge was, but in a different direction. All right, Sunday nights. So, and make sure you're here. Oh, I've got two more weeks and I'm on holiday for a week. OK, so I'm there this week and next week, then I'm off for a week. So that's... Karaoke at the Cherry Tree, Grove Vale, East Dulwich, Sundays 7 to 11. Expect to see you there at some point. Uh, Rory did a duet with his grandpa 11 years after his death in 1992 by using his last interview with me on tape. I remember Candyman. Yes, yeah, Sammy Davy, Davy Juris, uh, Jr. done it. Who was your grandfather? Was he a famous singer? Was he in a group or anything like that, Rory? Do let us know. Well, we like to know these things. Oh, yes, we might have... Famous people even watching this show one day. I mean, I gather the Queen watches it. She she pops in and out while she's doing the dinner. You know, she's very, very important, the Queen, dear. She hasn't got time to sit there watching whole shows. She, she dips in and out of it. <laughs> uh, Marge says, I'm a psychic. My mind thought grey jeans and it's raining here in Oklahoma and 40 degrees. Oh, what would it be here today? I wouldn't say it was 40 degrees. You're talking Fahrenheit. I would say it's about 
I would say it's about 60 degrees outside, but we've been quite used to 70, 75, 80 over the last few days. So it's feeling a little bit, probably feeling a little bit chillier than it uh, actually is. Um, Ronnie, of course, uh, my best mate, back from his operation, boys and girls. That seemed to go OK. Uh, yesterday, I popped over to his house and uh, he does seem to be in quite a bit of pain and uh, in and out the car with great difficulty, actually. Uh, but I thought we'd have a little day out and we went to one of our favourite places, the Garden Centre. This week, Long Acres, which is not far from me at all. And uh, we popped in there. I, I wanted specifically to get two new hanging baskets uh, because my... What are they? The petunias. They've they've just about had it now. Just a few faded leaves and flowers left on those. So I got rid of those. And um, usually I make up my own hanging baskets, but those ones are a little bit. They've they've kind of had it. Do you know what I mean? They were made of wood. And uh, so we went down there, and I spotted two lovely baskets, and they were uh, pink plastic. They had a pink plastic ones, and they had purple plastic ones. A little bit like the. Um, background I have behind me that sort of colour that like purpley bluey colour and uh, to be honest the flowers in the pink one in the in the pink ones were better than the flowers in the purple ones but I, of course I preferred the purple pots and it was a bit it and I said oh I don't know what to do he said I'll oh, just get the ones with the best flowers so that's what I did and <clears throat> these were already made up not a bad price £12 each they were and they, they were large ones they had some for £5 and some for £12 so I got the £12 one um, and um, uh, they're now hanging up and uh, looking rather nice yeah they do look nice I like to keep the front of the house looking quite nice and the other ones I emptied those out and uh, chucked those away now but I do take um, great enjoyment out of making, hanging baskets and doing gardening and all that sort of thing. Because it's not rushed, is it? You know, I don't know if you do any gardening yourself, but you kind of go around slowly chopping dead heads off or putting up a weed here and there. And if you do it every day, it never becomes a chore. And I do, do enjoy doing that. Cutting, pulling off the little dead heads and then more flowers come. Fabulous. This week, I... Um, I saw the most... Um, let me see if I can... I don't know if I'm going to get this up and show you, actually. I think I might. One minute. If I go on my um, on my Facebook and... Uh, Vectis says, am I having a funny turn? I'm always having a funny turn, Vectis. <laughs> let me see if I can get this flower picture back. Um, and I went looking for this particular one, actually. In, yes, there it is. Now, how do I... Can I download that and then show it to you? Yes, I can. One minute. So let's download that back to my system. I'm getting better at this, aren't I? Doing these bits and pieces. Right. Images. Open file. It's that one there. That one there. Right, have a quick look at this. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? It's absolutely stunning little flower. And I saw this. Oh, let me write that down. One minute. So where have we got flower at 12.15? <laughs> that means nothing to you at all, does it? It means when I'm um, editing the show for uh, the recorded... You know you're watching it live now, if you're watching it live. Well, then I record it for the recorded side of it, to put it up afterwards. And I have to know where to put these pictures back in again, you see? Because it doesn't doesn't record off the stream that you're watching. Anyway, so I found this flower. It, it was in someone's garden, actually opposite Ronnie's house. And, you know, I went online. That would be um, Thursday night, actually. I went online and I've searched everywhere. I typed in daisy with multicoloured flowers, uh, daisy with multicoloured petals, large daisy with multicoloured petals, uh, different petals, daisy. Oh, I couldn't find anything. I could not find it at all. So I put it on my Facebook wall. And Ben, who's a very good friend of mine, Ben is the man who helped me with the new karaoke system and everything. He's, he just knows everything about everything. He's, he's fantastic and such a nice person. Um, he said it was a dahlia. So then he sent me a link to a dahlia website and I looked on there and I found it straight away. Look at it. White and pink and yellow and it's just so pretty. Such a pretty plant. That's a dahlia. 
And certainly, I didn't realise there were so many different types of dahlias, aren't they? They're so stunning. Big ones with puffy heads and different petals and different shapes. So many different dahlias. And they come apparently as a corn. A corn. Is it a corn? A corn, which is a bit like a bowl, but not quite. And once it gets frosty, you have to dig the things up because they, they, the dahlias go completely black. Once that happens, you have to dig them up and then put the cor corns in a box of earth uh, somewhere that's cold but dry, but not frosty. So, you know, it's not like a, you can put them in the garden and leave them, which uh, I, I quite like those plants because there's not a lot of work involved then, is it? So I'm going to get some of those. Of course, I went and it's too late to order these things now, unfortunately. Um because of the time we're in so I, I you can register and then in january they send you an email when they're ready to go out and you can order them then or you can order them now and they just come automatically which is great so very very pretty plants uh wendy says yes 61 degrees fahrenheit in london at the moment oh is it yeah so it's about 60 which feels a bit cool to us because but it is pouring down with rain out there and very dark it's very very dark and dismal Scary people could come up behind you and attack you in this sort of weather. Daniel says, do you shave your chest? No. It, the hairs never grew, Daniel. Do you want a little look? Look. Look. Do you like my cleavage? Do you like, actually, I've got, a, I've got a story here. I've got a story about cleavages. Fun. Isn't that funny? Uh, we've linked into that there. Well, well, where is it now? Where did I print that off? Is it there? One minute. One minute. Oh, where's that gone? Oh, here it is. Here it is. So, yes, the, the hairs never grew on my chest. And I've got no hairs on my legs either, Daniel. They just never grew. Are you a hairy person? Oh, how awful. Do you have to shave? Have you got that special tape that you put it on and pull, pull it off quickly? Ronnie has to do that. Oh, he's hairy, get he is. Oh, they're everywhere. Coming out of his ears and his nose. Ears everywhere. All over his chest and he has that... <laughs> That stuff stripped off and he, he, he grabs it or someone grabs it and pulls all the airs off. Oh, by the way, if you want to join in tonight, uh, today, if you're watching the show live, if it's um, 20 past 12, coming up to 20 past 12 on Saturday, is it the 4th? Yeah, on Saturday 4th of October 2014, then you are indeed watching us live. If it's any other time, you're watching a recording. But if it's that time, you're watching us live and you can join in by Skype. We have a Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype name. Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's a Skype and you can send instant messages or indeed you can call in the show via Skype. If you haven't got that, but you've got a phone, you can call in as well. My phone in number... And it's a local London number is 020-8133-6358. All right. 020-8133-6358. Okay. That's how you can contact the show live. Alternatively, you can send an email. Whether you're watching live or listening to a recording or watching a recording, you can send an email. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk daniel please don't ask such questions you know i'm not going to read that out you're very very naughty rory says my friend nat is a flower painter there's a picture of me and her at an exhibition on my facebook from wednesday oh right okay let's have a look at that there you are rory right at the top of my little thing Oh, that's your friend. Is that the one that used to bring you... Hang on a minute. Is she the one that used to bring you to the um, karaoke? Or not? Do you want to see a picture of Rory, everyone? My friend Rory. Hang on, I'll bring that up as well. Oh, we're showing a lot of pictures today, aren't we, dear? That one there, that one there. And Rory is here. There's Rory. Okay. My friend Rory, he's a great karaoke fan. Let's come and sing. He sings stuff like the Beatles. 
Um, can't think why as he does. I know he does a couple of Beatles numbers. That's Rory on the right. And he goes very fast in that wheelchair sometimes. Very, very fast. Knocking people flying out of the way as he approaches the stage to sing his song. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> <coughs> Rory also says his dad was a soldier. He was 72, and it's raining in Fulham at the moment. Oh, the rain. We're going to have a bit of that re uh, 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 now, I think. Anyway, so on the subject of chests, a bra cam. Yes, you heard right. I saw this today. Can I just put my glasses on now? Because it's printed out very smallly. How do I look with a glass? Does that suit me? Glasses for passes and all that? No, is that is that doing anything for you? No, probably not. Just me then. Um, a bra cam. I got this um, from the Orange News website. A bra cam set up to monitor how many men and women can't resist a sneaky peek at a cleavage is proving a huge viral hit. Well, I have to say... <laughs> Talking of cleavages, I must tell you, when I was on holiday with my nephew in Florida uh, in January, uh, on a Sunday morning, it was Sunday morning there, Sunday afternoon here, he wanted to see a football match, so I had to find a pub to where he goes. So we found a place and uh, we went in there and there were all the girls, and this was first thing in the morning, like 11 o'clock in the morning. And there were all these, the girls, the waitresses in there have the tiniest skirts, which just about came below their bottoms. And, you know, things hanging out from the top. Not, not braless, but large, shall we say, large. Well, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. <laughs> Poor 17-year-old boy having to control himself with all these women floating around everywhere. Oh, he loved it. But the funny thing is, once the football came on, that was it. He lost interest and glued to the football screen. Chelsea, uh, 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 Chelsea, uh, uh. I was bored senseless. <laughs> I was on my mobile phone making another show for you lot. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Cleavages, honestly. Going back to this story then, Nestle Fitness fitted a hidden camera to a woman's bra in London to discover how often strangers were attracted to her cleavage. Do you know, I should do that. Maybe I should attach a camera, you know, to my front side and my back side to see how many people are looking, because I often miss it. You know, my mate used to tell, oh, you're getting attention tonight. Where from? Where from? I th you know, I thought he was making it up half the time. I could never see it. I could never see when someone's given me a bit of attention. That's true. That is absolutely true. Displayed in an displaying in an eye-catching pink bra through a virtually unzipped top, the volunteer wastes no time racking up the views in coffee shops, at work and on the tube. <laughs> and the resulting video, perhaps unsurprisingly, has proved a massive hit on YouTube, attracting more than 2.6 million views. Oh, I can only dream of two point. I can dream of tw 26 views sometimes, to be honest. You know, it would be nice to have 26 views. 2.6 million views, honestly. Surprising, the new blessed breast cancer campaign uh, shows men aren't the only ones partial to taking a sneaky peek. Is it you as well, ladies? Is that you, Wendy? Are you looking at other women's bras as you walk around? <laughs> ladies, what's going on? <laughs> the bra cam recorded 37 glances in one day with men and women, young and old, seemingly helpless to escape the lure. <laughs> of those caught on camera, it's the women who seem to make the least effort to conceal their stares. Oh no, my, my mate Ron's always oh, dreadful at staring. It's embarrassing. <clears throat> you see a fit lad and he, he will stare into their eyes. Like if they're in another car. And quite often I've, I've noticed, you know, not a very nice reaction coming back the other way. Oh, I hate it when he does that. He stares. Am I going to sneeze? 
Hang on, let me look at a light, because sometimes if I feel a sneeze, then a the light helps me it come out. Here. Oh. Is that is that gone? That's it. Oh my voice has got better. Because of the sneeze. How weird is that? Anyway, back to this story. Even a young child and a dog are filmed <laughs> admiring the women's breasts, but the majority of culprits are undoubtedly men. Well, not me. Not me, dear. I've tried that one and I didn't like it. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. So come on, Wendy. Are you doing that as well? Let's see if she's answered. Oh, she says, I look better than I do in glasses. I look like Deirdre Barlow. I don't really know, Vera. I don't really know. Oh, is that Deirdre? I don't watch Coronation Street. What a load of old rubbish that is. How can you sit there watching that, Wendy? Come on. <clears throat> no watching Coronation Street, please. Um. <laughs> Daniel's very quiet this morning. He's usually got a little bit more to say than that. Has he disappeared somewhere? Let's see. Oh, there he is. He is still there. I do worry about you sometimes, Daniel. You disappear sometimes into oblivion, don't you? Um, yep, don't forget the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Going to say good morning to Craig, who sent in an email and says, Craig here, hope you're keeping well. It's my 30th birthday this Sunday. Gosh, I don't feel like I'm 30. And a lot of people don't say I say I don't look like I'm in my 20s. Not sure what I'm doing for my birthday. No party, because I'm not really a party person. No, me neither. Me neither, funnily enough. I'm, I'm not really... I don't like going to parties. It's not weird. And yet I do them. You know, I play the music, I host and karaoke and all that quizzing. And yet I don't like to go to them myself. How odd. He says, I like a few drinks. Oh, but, oh, you like a few drinks? Oh, you'll have to get together with some of our other viewers. You know, Daniel, Daniel and Terry H like a few good drinks, don't you, boys? Oh, dear. Drinking all ours. Anyway, well, if it's your birthday, we better sing to you then. Here we go. Here we are, Craig. All right. Happy birthday, sir. I've got to tell you, Craig, um, don't think 30s old. My favourite age period <coughs> was 32 to 45. That was my favourite age period where I felt I was doing everything at my best between 32 and 45. OK, so you've got a, still a couple of years to uh, wait there. Craig says, science fiction news, Jerry Anderson's Stingray. Do you remember that? Stingray. Da -da, da -da -da -da. Stingray. Yep. It's 50 years old today. The puppet series, which was the first British series to be shot and shown in colour. Of course, sadly, Jerry Anderson passed away in 2012. I remember that. But now his son, Jamie Anderson, has taken over Jerry's business and brand new series are coming. Well, I'm liking the sound of that. <clears throat> he says, first up is a series which was written by Jerry Anderson called Firestorm. You can get involved in this via Kickstarter website address, um, kickstarter.com. OK. And secondly, <clears throat> a new series, Thunderbirds Are Go. Check this out. Thunderbirds is coming in 2015, featuring CGI, that's the computer generated image thing isn't it and live action sets it's being made in new zealand the soundtrack has been recorded in the uk by a doctor who composer ben foster uh, craig goes on to say anyway the new doctor series is uh, doctor who series is looking good i love the new style of doctor peter capaldi anyway take care chris i'm always watching your daily videos and mostly your saturday shows uh, regards from craig from there uh, he does hospital radio as well uh, yes, the new Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi, and I have to say, he is 
the best for me new Doctor Who so far. <clears throat> I thought Christopher Eccleston was good. I thought um, Matt was too young. Far too young. Matt was far too young. Oh, have I missed the call? Sorry, Daniel. I'll call you back in a minute. Um, and I thought... Who was the Scottish one? Oh, of course. I can't remember now. Who was the Scottish one? Do you remember? Uh, Scottish... Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name. Peter Tennant. I thought he overacted terribly. I just was not keen on him as a doctor. Funny, isn't it? Wasn't I didn't like the young one, Matt, at all. Didn't didn't really take to him. Uh the Scottish one was no, mind you, Peter Capaldi's no Peter Capaldi is is the best one by far. He's the right age, he doesn't overact. I really like him. That's my thoughts on that there. Right, that's not working. That's not working. Is anything working here today? Oh dear dear me. Uh, Wendy says, we love Coronation Street, us us Northerners, Corey. Oh, I don't like it. Is it true to life? I can't believe it's true to life. Really. I really don't. Happy birthday to Craig from uh, Wendy as well. Thank you, Wendy. Rory says, he's 35 and his favourite age was 23. Isn't that funny? We've all got our favourite ages. Haven't we? We've all got our favourite ages. And he says, what do you watch? Well... I watch Doctor Who. Um, I watch a program. Uh, we've only had two of them now so far called The Driver. Have you seen that, Rory? The Driver. It's on BBC One. And it's about this minicab driver. But he, he's got, got involved in criminal activities. And he is their driver. He doesn't do anything like the burglaries or... Um, killing people or anything like that <clears throat> all he does is the driving so he's got this mobile he's got an extra mobile phone that the criminal boss gave him and he was told you know whenever the phone rings answer it don't ever call me ever unless you absolute dire emergency and he so the bo boss rings him and says hello I've got a job for you I want you to go here quickly as possible. Pick up a package and deliver it to there, please. Don't look in it. So that's all he does, the driving. And it's it's really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. He seems to be getting caught up in all sorts of... Um, there's, there's, there's one going on at the moment where someone was... They thought they killed someone, but they didn't. And he saw it going on and he felt guilty. So he went and rescued the bloke, dropped him outside a hospital, into a hospital somewhere... And then came back and then um, <clears throat> used the story that he'd found this bloke in the road and he'd been run over. Anyway, so the people in the hospital told him to wait and they'd take some details. Well, he drove off, but then they got him on the CCTV. So the police went round there, ran to his house and says, um, oh, you, you brought someone in. Um, where was it you found him? So he told him, OK, right, fair enough. He said, well, there's no problem at all here. But just to let you know, you'd actually picked up a known criminal <laughs> you know so there's all sorts of twists and turns in that it's really good the driver on um bbc one um another program that i'm really really sad about is dallas now <clears throat> regular viewers and listeners to the show will know i am a big big dallas fan well i was working last night and um, usually at work, I'm on the internet somewhere, checking out stories and talking to people on Facebook. And this came into my email yesterday. Dallas has been cancelled after just three seasons on TNT. The cable network confirmed that a fourth season of the primetime soap will not be commissioned. And I am gutted. I loved it. I loved the original series of Dallas, um, which actually my my when this would going back what, what are we um thirty years 
going back 30, 31 years to when I started watching Dallas. And it was my girlfriend uh, who became my wife and then ex-wife <laughs> at the time. She's the one that got me into it. And I loved it. Dallas. Absolutely loved it. The story goes on, and this is on the Digital Spy website. A TNT representative said in a statement, We are extremely proud of the series, which defied expectations by standing as a worthy continuation of the Ewing saga. We want to thank everyone involved with the show, <clears throat> from the extraordinary cast to the impeccable production team led by the show's creative forces. <clears throat> We especially want to thank the people of Dallas for their warm and generous hospitality during production of the series. It goes on to say Dallas was, was revived by TNT in 2012 with original series star Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray and Larry Hagman all returning. The next generation of the Ewing old tycoons were portrayed by Joss Henderson and Jesse Metcalf. Larry, of course, passed away uh, last year, leading to a highly emotional send-off, which was really good. I don't know if you saw JR's uh, funeral on there, but it, it was really good. Um, season three wrapped up on September the 22nd with a shocking twist involving one Ewing family member. So I don't know what the end of this series is going to... Something's obviously going to happen. But then that will be it. No more Dallas. And I very much doubt it will ever come back again after that. So I'm really, really gutted about that one, um, Rory. I just loved... I just fantastic. And it was, it's made so well. It's really quite close. That I, I would say... I'd, I would say that... Um, there's more. There were more twists and turns in the remake of Dallas, or the continuation of Dallas in the last three series than there were on the original. And it has to be said, at times I found it quite hard to follow. You know, not quite sure how that got to that or what's going on there. You know what I mean? But great sadness to see that Dallas has finished, and I, I very much doubt that will ever return again. That's it now. That's it. Daniel says, I didn't know you were married. How long were you married for? Oh, only nine months. <laughs> didn't work for me, I'm afraid. Didn't work for me at all. Nothing to do with the fact that I was gay either. It was just, just didn't work, didn't work. I, I don't believe... Um, I know like, I fancy blokes more and other blokes will fancy girls more. But actually, I think you fall in love with the person. If, if the right person comes along, whatever side they are, then you, you could fall in love with them. You know, my mate, David, he was a DJ at a couple of the same places I was at. He was always gay from little boy going upwards. Then he went on holiday and met a girl. Married her. Now he's got children. And he was, he was in his late 40s and swapped over back again. You know, so I actually believe you fall in love with the person and perhaps not what they are. Marge says, on the subject of Ronnie's back pain, my mate's back pain, I threw out my back yesterday moving a doghouse. I'm there chair bound and with a cane I can barely move around. Oh, nothing worse than back pain, is there, Marge? I feel for you. When we dream of someone, they're usually in their 30s and people see ghosts. They say the same age. Seems 30 to 40 is our favourite time. Oh, definitely. Yes, definitely. Um, Daniel says, did you know you were gay when you first got married? Um, oh, you're asking personal questions now, aren't you? I knew there was... <clears throat> I knew I fancied men, but... I thought there was, a, it was a different time then. We're going back to the early 80s. I thought there was something wrong with me, Daniel. And I got married. Um, number one, I felt I was on a train and I couldn't get off it. You know, we were on this roller coaster and I thought, I, I just have to go through with it. I can't, can't get off this, right? And number two, I thought, why, why am I looking at men? I, I di didn't quite understand it. 
and I thought, well, I'll get married and, 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 and it will all be okay. But of course it wasn't. It just didn't work. So that's why that's, 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 um, hmm, that's why really. I thought there was something wrong with me. And now when I see people of all ages, um, who, who I think are gay and they're going out with girls, I, I do try and, you, you see, you mustn't go up to them directly and say, I think you're gay because that, that doesn't, that won't work. That won't work. You've just got to let them be themselves in their own time. You can assist. I was actually asked by um, someone living near to me that he thought, and he was an older chap, you know, about 45, 50, <clears throat> that he had a brother or a brother-in-law who was married or with a girl and I think one had died. I think they died or something. And they knew they were gay, but they hadn't kind of accepted it. It was just the way they were. There's a certain... I, I don't even know how to explain it. Certainly a lot of creative people are. Yeah, you've only got to turn on LBC. There's one, two, I think there's three gay blokes presenters on there. You know, so that that's it, yeah. So I thought there was something wrong with me at the time. There was, wasn't really anyone to talk to. <clears throat> we didn't understand the whole gay thing. So I thought, well, you know, and I thought, you know, all this married thing had been arranged. And I thought, well, you've got to go through with this now. You have to go through with it. And that's what happened. And I thought, well, get married. And that, then that'll be it. It'll all work. Ah, doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. Thank you, Daniel. I leave that subject there, but um, yeah, I don't mind answering that. Uh, Wendy's gone to get lunch already. Oh, cheerio, Wendy. You enjoy your lunch, my darling. Don't forget that email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, now, talking of the subject of those bra cameras, one of the um, regular customers who comes in to one of the places I work on Thursday night, the two brewers in Clapham. Last two weeks, he's been in there and he's got these Google glasses on, you know. So they're like a normal pair of glasses, right? But they've got a little square bit in the corner. And on that square bit, it projects a, a small computer screen. But because it's quite close to your eye, you know, you, you can see everything on there. And he's been, he just wears these. And he, he hasn't even got any lenses in them. It's just like a frame. <laughs> and I just think it looks stupid. It's just got a frame and a little, little square bit here, which is the computer screen. And he wears them all the time while he's out. The thing is, these things can be recording you, and you think, oh, no, I don't know about this. You know, this might be recorded. It's different I'm sitting here. I have chosen to sit here in front of a camera and a microphone and talk to you. And so that's different. But I don't know if I want to be recorded by Google people wearing Google glasses all over the place. I'm a little bit offended, to be honest. Would you feel comfortable like that? either wearing the glasses or, you know, talking to someone who's wearing them all the time. I, I'm really not keen on that at all. I don't, like, I don't like that at all. I don't think I'd buy a pair myself. I think, I mean, it's bad enough now, you know, we keep picking up our phones and checking for messages and that. I don't, I try not to do it too much, but I am conscious of, of doing it every time. You know, you're sitting there and you, you know, the worst time you do it is when you're watching the television. So you're watching the television, you think, I'll just check my Facebook. And then you, and you put the phone down and you've missed that and you think, oh, you, watch, you look at, back at the television again and you're not quite sure how that got to that because you weren't paying attention. Do you do that a lot? I bet you do, don't you? I think it's called second screening. There is a name for it. Anyway, I did have a go of these Google glasses. My mate gave them to me and I put them on and sure enough, there's this little screen here and, 
and you can adjust you can focus it you know because obviously everyone's eyes are different and you say google glass record and it just starts recording everything in front of it oh, i don't like that at all very very strange so that's enough about bra cameras <laughs> <laughs> and Google Glasses. Um, let's see, where are we now? So I was telling you earlier on in the show about the garden centre, so I've got these hanging baskets. And then afterwards, um, there's an ice cream man outside, which is really nice. Oh, there he comes a phone call now. Let's see who that is. Good morning. Hello. Oh, it's you. What do you mean it's me? Good morning. You're supposed to be being nice to me because I'm not well. Oh, here we go. Go on, spin it out. All not well. <clears throat> Are you still not well, lovey? I'm still not well. Well, don't you worry. Your best friend will be coming over later to look after you and talk to you. I'm off tonight. I can spend the yeah. entire night talking to you. No, it's fine. You can take me shopping. Well, we'll be going shopping a bit later. Are we? Yes. Oh, okay. Am I having... To, sorry, this is my best friend, Ron, who's just called in. On the off chance, I might answer. It's been a very, very busy show. Four million viewers at the moment. No, well, one of those is me. Oh. So there's only three viewers. Can you log on to some more of your devices to push the numbers up a bit? Yeah, of course. <laughs> how long have you been there? Uh, well, how long have I been watching? Yeah. I've switched on about a minute and a half ago. Oh, so you missed the bit about me being married. Oh. oh well, I've heard matter. that too many times. No, darling, you can watch it all again later. Oh. Have I got you turned up a little bit too loudly? Just a minute, I think I might have. Speak. Um, hello. Yeah. I thought you were banging away. Sorry if you were if you were um, uh, becoming deafened by my friend's voice there. Oh, I'm hardly, de I'm hardly a deafener. So then we had ice cream after the garden centre, didn't we? We did, yes. Did you see the size of that ice cream I had? <laughs> yeah, I had a small one. Do you fancy going down there later just for the ice cream? No. We can take an umbrella in a horrible no. day. You know, you know when you answer the phone, do you actually pick up a phone or do you, do you just talk? No, I just push a button. Oh, OK. Is that right? Because I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at you um, on the screen. and You don't seem to have a phone in your hand while you're talking. Oh, no, somewhere. dear. No, no, dear. No. No, it's just like a An radius. hour and 31 minutes? It's a... Ra you what? That's how long... An hour and 31 uh, no, minutes? No, no. The first hour, the first half hour is the warm-up music. Oh, OK. And as you can hear, my voice isn't up to much today either. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. Yeah, I was going to say that. So, yeah, I read your email about Dallas. How sad. Oh, well, I was talking about that at the beginning of the show. I'm really disappointed. Really yeah. just, but I had a feeling that was going to happen, to be honest. Um, yeah. The, the viewers in this country have, have not been good at all ever since it started, but apparently the ones in, in the, watching via TNT in America, they've dropped right off since Larry Hagman died, and that's the end of it. I can't see it ever coming back now, though, Ron. No. Did you, you never watch the original series, did you? I did, yes. I like that, Dallas and um, Dynasty. You know Didn't I've got a load on DVD. Favorite. Yeah. Did you know yeah, I've got... I can, I can get those on, um, on uh, catch-up and everything. Oh, can you? Yeah, well, we could start can. watching that from the beginning if you want. Oh, no. No, it means oh. we're spending far too much time with you. What? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a little trip to Waitrose later? Yes, we are. Okay. Well, I'll try and drag myself out of bed and make myself look half as Yes, we are. Would you like to know how it what happened last night? I, I saw that you got a tip. I got... Let me tell you, boys and girls. Last night, I had a job at a place in central London where I'd never been before. It's got a bit of a bad reputation, but nevertheless, um, an, an old DJ who's no longer with us, Dolly DJ, he was called. You never knew him, did you? No. No. Dolly DJ. He told me when I was 21 with DJing or entertaining of any sort at all, when you have a job, uh, sorry, if you have a night off and you get offered a job and the money's right, you take the job. Doesn't matter where it is, who it's for, or what the equipment's like. If the money's right, you take the job. Now, I've always, always done that. Right through my 31 years of doing this. Okay, is it 31? 
No, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three years of doing this. I've 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 always worked like that. Got an empty night, got a job. Oh yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. You right. sound like Danny LaRue. Shut up, I mean. thirty three years in the business. Shut up. Um recently I've lost a couple of jobs, as you well know, a few jobs this year. Um that's quite normal, there's nothing unusual about that. All jobs in the entertainment world come to the end at some point. Some quickly, some not so quickly. They all come to the end or you leave them. No entertainment job is for life, okay? So that, that's what happens. And since then, I have been offered a couple of little jobs and I've looked at them and I thought, oh, I don't fancy that one. And I've turned them down. And that's happened, is it three times? Well, I think it's three times, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. Three times I've turned jobs down. I thought, oh, don't fancy that one, you know. Or it's a little bit late to work there and, and this, that and the other. And this other job came in for last night. Because I've been putting the word around, you know, that I've, you know, I've got a few empty nights. And... I looked at it and I thought, oh, I don't know about that one. Because this place has a bit of a reputation, right? I thought, oh, I don't fancy doing that one. This was a DJing job. And I put the phone down and I went up to the swimming pool. <clears throat> While I was in the swimming pool, I thought, hang on a minute. You've got empty nights. You've already turned down three jobs. You're about to turn down another one. You know, do you still want to do this or not? There is money being offered here on the table. And I thought, you're making a mistake here, turning, picking and choosing. You can't do that in, in, in the job, in, in the sort of thing I do. You can't pick and choose. No. You can. Well, you can, but you lose out if you do, right? So I, I sent a message back. It was via an agent. And I said, OK, I'll do it. Anyway, so last night I'm in the car on the way down there. I thought, you know, this. I don't think this is going to be as bad as it was. So I got in there. And I would say I was one of the youngest people in there, right? And they have a dance area downstairs. It was a gay place in London. But they were quite old, which isn't a problem. That's just how it is. And I looked around. And when I went in, the music playing was all modern, sharp music. Bang, 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 bang. Everyone's sitting around doing nothing. And I'm looking around. I'm thinking, this is completely the wrong music. So I found when the governor, big bloke he was, all right, mate, I said, I'm playing your music. Oh, OK. I said, what do you want? Shall I just go down? He said, yeah, just go down and do it, mate. I said, what do you want me to play? He said, just go with, go with what you usually do. He said, if they don't like it, they'll soon come up to you and tell you. OK, thanks very much. And I went downstairs and I took off the chart music and I went straight on to 70s and 80s. This is the music I love as well. And I thought, hang on a minute. I think I'm going to quite enjoy this. Now, it wasn't over busy. Can't lie to you. It was only about a quarter full. Wouldn't, weren't as much as a third. It was about a quarter full. And I started playing 70s and 80s. Um, and, and it worked. And I had five. And it doesn't happen anymore. It used to happen a lot. <coughs> the kids don't seem to bother saying thank you or we enjoy it anymore. Um, five people came up to me and said that what a wonderful selection of music was. One bloke, and I've never, ever had this before, one bloke came up and, 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 and took my phone number for his works party that he's having towards the end of the month. He says, I want you to do it. You're playing exactly the music that everyone will want there. He said, I really want how much you charge. So I told him, he said, oh, no, 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 no. I'll pay you much more than that. I said, well, that's all I want. He said, no, no, no. He said, don't worry about that. He said, I'm fine with money. And um, so he went Oh, you'll have to introduce me. He, <laughs> he went off and he came back a bit later after playing several of his requests. He said, he said, I'm going home now. He said, I've got a, a, a lot to do tomorrow with business. He said, there you go. I want you to take that. And he pushed a note into my hand. I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, that's all right. I said, I don't take tips. He said, just take it, please. He said, um, I like to give people tips when they do good jobs um, for me. And um, you've played all my requests tonight, all those that you've had anyway. He said, so take that. And off he went. I never saw him again. And I looked into my hand. It's a £50 note. £50. £50. 
I couldn't believe it, Ron. No. I could not believe it. A £50 note. Never, like ever him. had a tip. I've had a couple of tips before. A um, couple of quid here, a couple of quid there. I think the most I've ever had was a fiver. Can't remember mm. what that was for. It was a long time ago. 50 quid. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, so I told the doorman, usual doorman, you know, quite hard looking, but he talks to them, they're fine. Nice blokes. So I told him, he said, oh, yeah, I know that is. I said, why? He said he's done that b before with people. Um, like when we have charity events, he always gives 50 quid. And he's like some of the staff occasionally, he, he gives them a tip. I said, well, I, I'm just gobsmacked by that. Really gobsmacked. So the the very job, and I thought, oh, I don't know. I had a really good time last night. Oh, and I finished an hour early, Ron, because it, um, it petered out at two o'clock, so we closed at two. Oh. What a night. Wow. Well, that's good. I was very pleased with that. Anyway, back to me. <laughs> yes. Oh, message from what? Daniel. Just a moment. Daniel says, Ronnie moaning. Anyone would have thought the first injection he has had in his bum. <laughs> don't know what he means by that. Do you, dear? No, I haven't got a clue what he means by that. He wants to know if he can come to Waitrose. No. Oh, we don't have your sort there, I'm afraid, Daniel. No. There must Go be back a, to Iceland. Must be Go a, back to Iceland. Must be Iceland-y. <laughs> yeah. Go back to Iceland. Right, so I shall see you a little bit later. Shall I have dinner I before I come over? I didn't manage to get a word in edgeways today. Isn't that funny? The same as normal. Yeah, have dinner before you come over, Ron. I'll be ready for about half past two. Righty-ho. I'll be over for then, then. Thank you. All right, cheerio. Bye, Bye then. Thanks for calling the golden shot. Bye-bye. There we are. Best friend Ron gone. Yeah. That was nice. At least I get one call. No one seems to call in anymore. Why is that? Anyway, you're too bloody late now. I'm finished. Nearly, nearly finished. But I just want to show you. Have I talked about everything I wanted to talk about? Dallas cancelled. Yes. Da, 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 da. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 I've talked about everything I wanted. Finally today, you remember on one of the short shows, and I think last week on the long show as well, I spoke to you about um, Rhonda. Now, Rhonda is Richard, whose 50th birthday party I went to two, two weeks ago. I can't believe that. Two weeks ago. I went to his birthday party a couple of weeks ago. And his aunt Rhonda had a heart operation. And she was going to do a sky, uh, which all works and f fine. And she wanted to make some money for the hospital that looked after her. Um, by doing a skydive. So she's done it. And here is a picture of Rhonda doing the skydive. Check that out. Look at that. There she is. That's Auntie Rhonda. She is 75 years old. Look at that. And she's done a skydive. Well done, Rhonda. Isn't that fantastic? I wish I could be brave enough to do something like that. I really could. I mean, I've, I'm even scared to go up the top of a block of flats, to be honest. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, Rhonda. Uh, Rory says, fun show, Chris. I'll call in on your next live show. Yeah, next Saturday. Please call in. Be nice to hear from you, mate. All right. And uh, Daniel says, I'll meet you at 2.30 at Bracknell Waitrose. Oh, no, we've told him now. Wouldn't that be great? Right. If I walked in and there was a little fan club waiting by the flower section in Bracknell Waitrose at 2.30. <laughs> oh, God. There's an idea for you all. Anyway, time to go. Thank you very much for uh, joining in this morning, boys and girls. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, as always. Uh, my email address, once again is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk don't forget we do do a daily little video monday through to friday and you can find that at the main website unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk you have a lovely saturday i'll see you soon thanks for watching and listening bye bye now <laughs>